Hi you guys, it's Alyssa. I am back with another reading. So today's reading is what is blocking me in the love department. Um, what's blocking me from get, having the kind of relationship or the kind of partner that I am looking for? What attitudes or beliefs are um, preventing me from finding what I want? Um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, the messages that we get could be a little bit um, blunt. So just going to throw that out there just to warn you guys. If you um, are afraid of hearing about, I don't know, aspects of your personality that you don't care to hear about or think about, then this might not be the um, reading for you. Um, but also just keep in mind, these are general readings. Um, you know, not, uh, not everybody who watches the readings are going to resonate with them. Um, and if the reading you pick does not resonate with you, then it wasn't meant for you. Um, you can try a different one or come again next time and, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you'll have better luck. So, um, today's, uh, topic was the second highest voted in the poll that I did a few days ago. Um, Again, I want to apologize for my lack of consistency. I feel really bad about it, but I am finally caught up for the most part on private readings. So hopefully this week I will be able to get out um, some of those chatty videos that I've been talking about doing and uh, a couple more readings for you guys. So we've got four options today. We have group one, two, three, and four. Um, group number one is this opalite. This is my favorite little rock. Group two is citrine. Group number three is bloodstone. And group four is fluorite. Okay, you guys. So um, I will give you a minute to think about which pile you want to choose, and then we will go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with pile one. Group one, Opalite, what is blocking you? All right, let's see what you cards you have here. Okay, we have your commitment is being tested and we have conclusions are within reach. So, interesting, I'm getting Hmm. I'm getting like, so with this card, I'm getting that some of you guys may be um, prolonging something or trying to prolong something that's not really serving you. Um, and what this card is saying is that there has to be a conclusion to whatever that is. So, you know, it could be that you are holding on to a particular person that maybe deep down you know it's not gonna work out, but you're still holding on to it because you want it to work out. Um, but then with this card, your commitment is being tested. This card usually shows up when, you know, it's kind of like, how badly do you really want something? Um, are you willing to put in the, the work and the time and the effort to have what you want? So it, it's, it's honestly a little bit of a conflicting um, message so far. Um, so let's see what other cards want to come out for you guys. Um, what deck do I want to use? Let's use this one. So let's see what's going on with group one. What is blocking group one? Whoa. Okay, I am not gonna take all of those cards because that's way too many. What's blocking group one? So we've got the chariot, we have the two of swords and the knight of pentacles. So um, the chariot card is about movement. This could be kind of building upon what I was talking about with this card, um, a need to move forward or need to move on. But 
being kind of reluctant to do so, okay? And it, that could be because the situation that you are involved in right now or maybe a person that you've been um, holding on to has been moving so slowly and it seems like there's not been hardly any progress that's being made. Um, so I think you guys are kind of caught. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I get it now. You guys, Two of Swords, this is about indecision. It's about having two options and, and being unable to choose between them. Um, you guys are kind of caught between sticking it out and moving on. You're not sure what you should do. Okay. It's the um, indecision. You don't know. Let's see what else is going on. What other messages do we have for group one? We have the justice card. Justice is about balance. It's about fairness. It can be um, an indicator of a karmic situation, the karmic connection. Um, the hermit card. The hermit is about withdrawal. It's about reflection. The King of Cups, okay. So what is blocking you guys? I feel like you guys are not exact. I, I feel like this message is mm, for people who are like specifically thinking about like a particular person. Um, I don't think this message is really for, like, your love life in general. I feel like this is more a message for those of you who are dealing with a specific individual, um, or specific situation. So if you, if that's not really the case for you, then this probably isn't your reading, okay? But I feel like you guys are involved with somebody or connected to somebody somehow that has really pulled away from you or you've pulled away from each other. Um, either way, it seems like there's not a lot of communication going on, at least not in the, the physical sense, in the 3D, okay? Um, it's probably some sort of very powerful soul connection, okay? Um, and it's something that I think this is a person that you feel very connected to, very, um, uh, you feel very strong, uh, strongly towards them. I, I just, I get that there's a lot of love here, but there's something, clearly there's something going on, um, uh, because you guys are kind of caught between, you know, sticking it out and moving on, um, letting it go. I think some of you have tried to let it go, but you've struggled to do that. This really feels like a, um, either a karmic or a twin flamey sort of situation. All right, guys. So again, if that's not what you're going through, then this probably isn't your reading. Um, maybe try a different one. Um, we have the emperor, we have the moon. So the emperor, um, you know, the basic interpretation, you, you could be dealing with an Aries or somebody who has a lot of Aries or fire in their chart, um, but signs, you know, signs are irrelevant, really. Um, you could be, I feel like, though, you're dealing with somebody who's kind of stubborn, or maybe you have become kind of stubborn when it comes to this situation, like, I, I just feel like there's two people here who are kind of butting heads, like both refusing to give in, even though they're both, you know, wanting to reach out to the other person, but it's sort of like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait for them to do it. But the other person is saying the same exact thing. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait for them. Um, interesting. So, uh, but I think that's because... Somebody here is not sure how the other person actually feels, or they're not sure how the other person is going to react, um, because the moon card is about, you know, not knowing something. It's about something that's sort of 
it's, you know, it's about the unknown. Um, so I think the reason that nothing is really happening is because they're not sure, somebody's not sure, or maybe both of you are unsure of how the other person would respond to any movement. Um, yeah, and so you're just in this hanged man kind of energy. Nobody's doing anything. You're, you're both just kind of floating around, uh, waiting for something to happen, waiting for the other person to do something. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, this is probably definitely like a twin flame thing because the, um, the four of wands a lot of times can indicate that because it's, you know, it's got the 11, 11. Um, and also, in my experience, the number four in general is, is significant to, um, oh, twin flame connections. So um, that's what this feels like to me. Um, so again, if that's not your situation, this probably isn't the reading for you. So, uh, yeah, this one's not so much like, uh, you know, I was expecting this reading to be like, what's blocking me in general, you know, but this is more like what's blocking this particular situation. Um, so let's get into it a little bit more. What actually, what is blocking this particular situation from um, progressing? We have the Ten of Swords. Okay, so there's some sort of um, negative feelings, emotions, or energy that are kind of lingering around somebody here um, that I think is probably at the root of this blockage. Um, could be you, could be them, could be both of you. You, um, if this is a twin connection though, um, any work that you do for yourself is going to kind of be mirrored back onto them. Um, at least like energetic work, that kind of thing. Um, you know, if your person has like psychological issues or something, then you, there's nothing you can, you can fix about that. Um, but you know, if like, if there's, you know, some like bad karma or just bad energy floating around you, you guys, you know, y you can work on clearing that and that will help both of you out. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah there's the six of swords. So, um, I really feel like Okay, I feel like the thing that is keeping this situation right now from moving forward is just the fact that there's some karmic blockages or something of that nature that is, that, that somebody needs to work through, okay? And I think once that happens, there's going to be movement because the six of swords is about coming together and reconciliation and that kind of thing so i feel like as soon as these karmic blocks or you know it could be like uh there could be some like soul contracts or something that need to be addressed that need to be broken um karma from past lives uh, or, and also potentially from this one that, that need to be cleared away and released. Um, but I think as soon as that happens, I feel like you're going to be able to start seeing progress. Okay. Um, and I am like, I'm not like an expert on that kind of thing, you know, clearing energy or anything like that. Um, however, there are a lot of like, there's a ton of information available to you about how to do things like that. Um, so I, if this reading resonates with you, I would really recommend, um, looking into that. Okay. You might want to, um, take a peek into your, uh, Akashic records or, or something like that. Um, I'm not an expert on that subject. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I don't want to, um, I want to give you too many suggestions that might not be super legit, okay? But um, I do recommend looking into that and uh, maybe doing some, you know, meditations or something um, with that intention or just, you know, doing some cleansing, okay? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, because I think that is really what is at the root of the blockage here in this particular situation. Um, that's what's keeping this from moving forward, and I feel like once those things are cleared away, then um, 
you're going to start seeing some progress, okay, guys? So, um, that is what is blocking you guys. Um, that wasn't really what I was expecting this reading to be, but um, I guess that was a specific message for my twins and out there. Um, okay, so let's move on now to group number two. Um, thank you so much, by the way, group one, for watching. I hope I see you next time. All right, group two. Oh, my God. <laughs> Citrine. Wow. I can barely function, guys. Um, let's see what your cards are. Okay, we have emotions are running high, and we have a new romantic cycle begins. Okay, guys. So both of these cards are actually quite positive. Um, so it's... This is an interesting... These are interesting cards to get um, if we're talking about blockages here, because emotions are running high. This card talks about, you know, really deep feelings. This is like a big yes card. It's very positive. Um, and a new romantic cycle begins, you know, it's a new moon. It's like a new beginning for, you know, in, in the area of partnerships. So let's see what other cards want to come out for y'all. Let's see what is blocking group two. Whoa. Okay, we've got Queen of Cups, Page of Pentacles. So Queen of Cups is, um, it's kind of a similar energy to the Supermoon card because it's very emotional energy. It's, um, this card can also indicate like psychic connections, um, 5D connections, that kind of thing. The Page of Pentacles is, uh, Page of Pentacles is kind of making you an offer. It's, um, Oh, wow. There's the sun card. I need to fix this. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's get some clarifiers for these. So the sun card is the most positive card in the deck. It is a lot of good warm feelings. Um, there's the eight of cups. So it seems like there's some sort of connection possibly that the two of the two of Let me back up. There's some sort of connection, really strong, emotional psychic or 5d connection that you guys have walked away from or maybe the other person walked away from um interesting okay two of pentacles and page of wands all right so the two of pentacles in I know the Two of Pentacles is not typically seen as a soulmate card or a twin flamey card, but in this particular deck, that's really how I see it because of the mirroring going on in this imagery. Um, and, you know, twin flames and high level soulmates are, you know, thought to be mirrors of each other. So, um, huh. This is interesting. I wasn't intending for these readings today to be specifically for um, twin flames or, you know, soulmate connections, but that's what I'm getting from this reading, and that's also what I had for group one. So this is this is interesting, you guys. Um, so I'm going to say what I said to group one. If you're not in a situation where you're dealing with a twin or a high level soulmate or anything like that, this probably isn't your reading. Um, because what I'm, the story that I'm getting here is that you guys have been dealing with a twin or I'm just going to say a soul, a soulmate, um, that it seems like there wasn't a lot of progress being made. It seems like it was sort of not really going anywhere. And so you moved on from it. Um, and possibly have gotten involved with somebody else. And some of you guys, I think this connection that you walked away from is sort of blocking you guys from finding new partners or from, you know, 
uh, being able to invest in new relationships. Does that make sense? Because with these two pages, I feel like, you know, you guys are trying to, you know, take your time and start small um, because the pages are kind of an immature energy. You know, it's not like they're, they make offers and stuff, but they're not like big offers. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel like you guys are trying to date or maybe you've recently gotten involved with new people. Um, but it just seems to me like you can't really, you haven't been able to, I don't know what's going on with my tablecloth here. Hang on. Give me a second. There we go. Um, it just seems to me like you haven't really been able to totally, um, I'm getting that some of you guys maybe feel kind of guilty for seeing other people when you have this other, this, this person that you feel super connected to. Um, and so some of you guys have tried to just, you know, stay single and not, you know, uh, not look for anybody because you either, you don't feel like you can date other people while you're feeling so strongly attached to this person that you're not really involved with or you um you know you've tried to date other people and it you've just it just hasn't felt right to you because you know you could be feeling guilty um for moving on but I don't think you need to right I don't think that Because, like, if you're, you know, if, if your twin or your soulmate is not actively a part of your physical reality, then, you know, you, you don't owe them anything. You know what I'm saying? If they're not making the effort to be in your life, then, like, you don't owe it to them to wait around for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if they got shit to deal with, let them do it. And, you know, live your life in the meantime, um, because, like, you deserve to have, you know, something fun and passionate and exciting that you can get involved in and, you know, somebody that is going to make you feel, you know, wanted and loved, like you deserve to feel. Um, but I really feel like the thing that is blocking you guys is this this soul connection that you've got going on because this is it's with a person that you're not actually literally I mean physically involved with so you kind of feel obligated to you know I want to say you you feel like obligated to wait for them or you when you start to get involved with other people, you start to feel guilty, um, like you're doing something wrong. Um, but, you know, that's, you don't need to feel that way because you're not doing anything wrong. You know, if, if you, if you are not committed to this person in the, you know, in the, the physical reality, then you're not doing anything wrong, okay? You're really not, I promise. Um, it is possible to balance, like, 5D connections with 3D relationships. It's totally doable. Um, lots of people have done it. Lots of people are currently doing it. Um, you know, it's just... You just got to get over the... the um, You've kind of, how do I want to say this? If you're feeling guilty about it, you just have to, you just have to give yourself a little bit of time to um, get over that and, and understand that, like, you deserve to be happy and, you know, you deserve to have somebody that is going to give you the things that you need and want to have right now. Um, and if your twin or whoever this person is, is not giving that to you, then you know what, that's, 
that's their that's their problem um because they're you know they're gonna come back around eventually um most likely so you know you don't need to worry about getting into a relationship and then you know, your twin coming back around and having to, like, choose between them and this other person. Like, I don't, I don't really feel like that's going to happen for you guys. Um, because it's like, I feel like I need to pull out one more card here. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes, you, you're like the empress, and it doesn't matter if you're a woman or not. Gender is irrelevant, just like signs are irrelevant. Um, you're, the, you're the empress, and you deserve to be treated like the empress. And if your twin is not doing that, if they are not, you know, meeting your needs, then fuck it. You know what? Find somebody who will, and, and you don't have to feel bad about that. Like, please don't feel bad about that. So, basically, the short story here, what I'm getting is that you guys are trying to date or trying to be in relationships with other people, but you're having a hard time doing that because of this connection that you have with somebody, your twin, your high-level soulmate, whatever. Um, and so that connection is what is blocking you from, you know, finding a relationship the kind of relationship that you want in your 3D reality. That's what I got for you, group two. Um, I hope that this reading resonates with you. If it does, feel free to leave me a comment, and if it doesn't, then um, sorry about it. Uh, try a different reading. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate all of my viewers. Um, by the way, we we have surpassed 6,000 subscribers, so that's really exciting. I probably should have mentioned that at the start of the video, but I forgot. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for that. And um, what else was I going to say? I don't know. I never know how to end these things. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye! We're going to move on now to group number three, which was Bloodstone. So let's see what your cards are, group three. We have a new start is coming, and you are good enough. Okay, so right away with this card, you are good enough. I feel as though a lot of you guys who picked this option might have issues with um, self-worth. Um, and then a new start is coming. You, uh, you guys might feel like you're never going to find somebody who is going to treat you the way that you deserve to be treated. You might, I'm getting the sense that some of you guys have just sort of resigned yourself, yourselves to, you know, being in bad relationships. It's like, you know, I've only ever had shitty relationships and that's all I'm ever going to have, I guess. And that is um, not a good attitude. So, I can tell you right now that that is your blockage, um, but let's just see what other cards want to come out for y'all. Let's see here. What is blocking group three? We have the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Magician. Okay, cool. Um... Seems to me like you guys have probably been involved with a number of um, possibly karmic partners, okay? Because the Wheel of Fortune can talk about karma, it talks about cycles, it talks about fate. Um, and the Magician, the Magician is about manifestation, okay? Um, and it's also about like, it's about creating Okay, it's about having all of the, um, what am I saying? What am I saying here? So, on this card, you can see, 
There is a sword, there is a pentacle, there is a wand, there is a cup. All four of the suits are being represented here. Um, so it's kind of like the magician has all of these tools here. Um, and with these tools, he can create whatever he wants. Um, so I feel like something that's going on with you guys is that you don't realize that you have all the tools you need to create the type of relationship that you are looking for or to attract the type of partner that you really want and deserve to have. You don't realize that you have everything you need already inside of you. Um, and so I think that some of you guys are looking for someone to complete you, but you're already whole. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what else is going on here. What other cards want to come out for group three? We have the six of cups. We have the nine of wands. So um, the six of cups, this card talks about nostalgia, memories, childhood. It's also uh, sometimes a soulmate card. Um, so this card tells me that some of you guys are looking in the wrong places or you're looking for something within the wrong people or the wrong type of people. It feels to me like, okay, so this is kind of a specific message. Um, and if it doesn't resonate for you, that's okay. Um, this is just for a handful of people. Um, some of you guys are looking like far and wide for partners when really there's somebody very near you that is like exactly what you're looking for. And it, you don't necessarily know this person, but it could be that this is somebody who you knew a long, long time ago, like when you were a kid, or somebody that um, is from like your hometown or something like that. So um, that's just for some of y'all. Okay. Um, the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is, oh my goodness. Um, the Nine of Wands is about um, perseverance. It's about overcoming obstacles and uh, pushing through to the very end to achieve the thing that you want. Um, we have the High Priestess and we have the Five of Cups. The High Priestess tells me that what some of you guys need to do is really go within and kind of, you might need to reevaluate a little bit what it is that you're looking for, what it is that you want in a partner. Um, because maybe, I don't know, maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't really thought in depth about that for some time. Like maybe you, you know, compiled a list like two years ago of the things that you're looking for in a partner. Um, maybe it's time to go back and update that list. You know, is everything that you have you know, are, are, are all those standards and requirements still things that are important to you? That kind of thing. Um, and I also feel like a lot of you guys are just kind of feeling like giving up, okay? Um, I got that from the Nine of Wands and from the Five of Cups, which is about feeling lost and sad and, you know, this horse is sitting here, like, in the rain, just kind of, it's just kind of resigned itself to being rained on, um, you know. So, like I said, it seems to me like you, that, that there's that word again, resignation. It's like a lot of you guys have just resigned yourselves to taking whatever comes to you, even if it's, even if it sucks. Um, there's the Ten of Cups. There is the Queen of Pentacles. So the Queen of Pentacles is about stability. She is a very um, maternal kind of figure. She's very... Um, she is the kind of person that is going to keep you safe. She is going to, you know, she's very gentle, but like, she also will kick you, kick you in the teeth, you know, if you fuck with her or her people. Um, so I feel like this is the sort of energy that you need to, you know, work towards embodying like right now you're you're more like this horse um 
you know, just feeling kind of, kind of sad, like, kind of, you've just kind of given up, you know, you're not like, okay, the, what I'm about to say might be a little bit, um, I don't know, it might come off, it might rub some people the wrong way, but I'm going to say it anyway, so please don't be mad at me, please don't yell at me in the comments because I am sensitive, um, some of you guys just take whatever comes your way because you feel like it's the best thing you're going to get. Um, and you just sort of allow shitty people to come in and fuck up your life because you just don't want to be alone. All right, sis. Um, that's what I got. And there's the Empress. Yes. Look, these two cards are you in reality. Like this is this is the energy you're projecting, you're you're putting out there, and that's how you're kind of feeling, but this is what you really are, okay? You're the Queen of Pentacles, you're the Empress. You're powerful, you're intelligent and beautiful, and it doesn't matter if you're not a woman, that it that's irrelevant. Um it's just like you deserve so much better than the dick bags that come your way, than, you know, the people that you let in. Because, um, like, this Ten of Cups is something that you can totally have. Um, but I feel like a lot of you guys feel like that's not something that's ever going to be available to you because maybe you've never really had that, you know? Maybe you've been with people that you thought were going to be able to give you the Ten of Cups, but they didn't they let you down. Um, but, you know, this is still within your reach. You just have to find the right person. And as long as you are, you know, feeling this way, as long as, you, as okay, you guys need to be more discerning when it comes to who you give a chance, okay? Um, you, you gotta, you gotta be choosy, okay? And you might be thinking, well, I can't afford to be choosy. Not true. You can afford to be choosy. I mean, we're talking about, like, partners, okay? This, we're talking about people that you're gonna potentially spend your life with. You know, you don't wanna, you don't, you don't wanna, you don't wanna hang around with some asshole you know, for years of your life, because that's just, that's not good, that's, that's gonna weigh you down, that's gonna lower your vibrations, like, you don't want to hang around people like that, you know, so, um, just because some asshole is in front of you doesn't mean you have to accept them, it doesn't mean you have to give them a chance, because you don't, and you probably shouldn't, um, the thing that's blocking you is that you feel like you're not worthy of something good. And because, you, um, because you're projecting those feelings of unworthiness and, you know, just, I'll, I'll just take whatever comes my way, you're projecting those feelings and so that energy is attracting exactly the kind of people that you don't need, <laughs> okay? Because, you know, some people are like roaches. Y you know, they're just drawn to, like, low self-esteem and that kind of thing because they can, they can, they can, like, they can smell it or something. I don't know, but they, they can, they can sniff that out and exploit that, okay? Um, and that's not what you want to attract into your life. So you guys, I think, really need to work towards raising your vibrations and take a break from, you know, dating, I think. Take a break from trying to meet people for a little while. Um, but the most important thing I feel like is that you need to change your thought patterns, um, Practice, like, doing positive affirmations, like, I am worthy, I am good enough, I am this, I am that, I am all good things, and, 
you know, because that's going to help you kind of like reprogram your brain a little bit. And, and, you know, when you start telling yourself good things about yourself all the time, like you, you'll, you'll start to believe it eventually. And the same way it, it's, it goes the same way with negative thoughts. If you, if you, if you constantly say negative things about yourself and that's what you're going to believe, um, so, you know, your thoughts have a lot of power and, and you do need to be careful of, you know, the things that you allow to come to your mind, right? Um, and be careful of the thoughts that you choose to focus on. Okay. So, um, group three, I hope that makes sense. And I hope you find this reading helpful. I hope it resonates with you. Um, again, these are general readings. They're not going to resonate with everybody who sees them. Um, sometimes only parts of the readings are applicable for certain people. So if you felt drawn to a, uh, to this group, um, that doesn't mean that, um, the entire reading was meant for you. It could mean that just, uh, certain parts of it were meant for you to hear. So just keep that in mind, you guys. Um, so yeah, group three, that's your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you next time. It is time now for group number four, the fluorite obelisk. I don't know if you can see, but it has like purple in it, which I think is very pretty. Okay, guys, let's see what your cards are. So we have prosperity lies ahead and we have step out of your comfort zone. So um, step out of your comfort zone. This right away is telling me that some of you guys may be um, kind of like keep going back to the same people or the same type of person because it's what you're used to and it's what you feel comfortable with. This has to stop, <laughs> okay? Um, because we're talking about blockages, so, you know, the fact that maybe you are reluctant to step outside of your comfort zone is something that is blocking you from acquiring the type of partner or relationship that you really want. Also, prosperity lies ahead. Again, I'm getting a similar thing. It's like, you know, you are a little bit, um, I feel like you guys are just kind of like walking around in circles. And, you know, there's this path that is ahead of you, but you are reluctant to walk down it. Instead, you keep walking around in a circle. Um, but if you just, you know, find the courage to take that path, then you will find success and prosperity. Okay, guys. Um, so that's what I've got so far. Let's see what other cards want to come out for y'all. What deck do I want to use, guys? Okay, we're gonna go with this one. So what else does um, group number four need to know? What is blocking them? What do we got? Seven of Cups. So the Seven of Cups is about, um, it's about having a lot of options. It's about being kind of lost in daydreams. It's about being kind of confused. It can have all of those energies. Um, associated with it. The Ace of Swords is about um, truth and insight and a new beginning based on those concepts. The World card, that's about cycles. It's about movement. It can indicate travel. Um, and it is also about completion. So I'm seeing that, um, hang on, that's, uh, I'm not going to take all of those, but we'll see if any of them come out again. Okay, we have judgment, we have the full look, starting a new journey, being brave, taking that leap, just just going for it, just do it. It's like that, whatever, anyway. Um, <laughs> judgment is also about rebirth, it's about an awakening, it's about uh, restoration. So guys, Eight of Swords. Okay, guys, I'm going to take a break from shuffling for a minute. Let's see. So I think that you guys, a lot of you, not all of you, but a number of you, enough of you to, um, enough of you for this energy to be coming up, um, 
you guys maybe um, project a little bit on the people that you're involved with. Because Seven of Cups, like I said, can talk about, you know, like daydreaming, um, being a little bit disconnected from reality. Um, so I feel like you guys kind of, um, you might get caught up in, you know, these like fantasies about the people that you get involved with, like, you know, projecting all this good stuff onto them, even though maybe they're not actually... I feel like you just kind of convince yourself that your relationships or your partners are better than they actually are. Does that make sense, guys? And um, I feel like you guys have, a lot of you have experienced um, a pattern of this with this um, thing here because I'm, I'm getting like a story. It's sort of like these top three cards are like, it's like a, it, it's like a repeating, it's like a cycle that just keeps happening over and over again. This card is about cycles, right? Um, you know, you get involved with somebody and you're like, oh, this is great. This is the person I'm going to be with forever. This is awesome. I love this person so much and they are everything. They're amazing. But then something happens and you kind of, something kind of forces you to, you know, come back to the real world and, like, look at this situation for what it really is. Um, because the Ace of Swords is about honesty, right? And I'm seeing this sword, you know, cutting through all these vines and stuff, and it's sort of like something happens that forces you to look through all of the bullshit and all of the, like, figments of your imagination or whatever. Um, and then it comes to an end, that relationship comes to an end, and then it starts all over again with somebody else. Or, or possibly the same person, um, you know, just like like round two or something, or, or round four, I don't know. Um, but uh, there's that, you know, like at the start I was talking about going around in circles, there's this really strong energy of just going around in circles, doing the same thing, repeating the same mistakes, um, getting involved with the same type of people. Um, what you really need to do is wake up, open your eyeballs, and realize that nothing is going to change as long as you keep doing the same things, okay? Um, and that could mean, you know, you have to stop giving the same person or the same people uh, chances over and over again. That could mean um, going out and pursuing different kinds of people. Like, if, <laughs> if all of your partners have basically follow the same like formula or whatever um it might be time to break out of that habit of you know picking up the same type of person you know um and and open your mind up a little bit and um give something different a go you know because we have the um the full card which is about starting a brand new journey it's about a, a whole new adventure and you know, it's about being optimistic about that. So, you know, this is what you need to do. You need to just take that jump and trust that everything will be okay. And that, you know, nobody's going to hurt you just because you're out, you know, feeling a little bit vulnerable, um, not fully knowing what to expect. It doesn't mean anything bad's going to happen to you. In fact, that is a really good way to get some new experience and learn something new and, you know, Kind of broaden your horizons a little bit um but i think a lot of you guys are afraid of that and so you're kind of in this eight of swords energy of you know just being like kind of isolating yourself and um being withdrawn and you know not being willing to open yourselves up to receiving anything different from what you're used to okay does that make sense you guys um so what I think is blocking you is that fear or that uncertainty, that um, reluctance to step outside of your comfort zone, okay, guys? So, um, that was really straightforward. Um, I don't know if any other cards want to come out. I did pull, okay, here we go. We have the Emperor card. Yeah, you're, you're just, you guys are kind of stubborn. You guys, 
you know, you're you're sitting in this chair with this gun and this big stick in your hand, like ready to fight. You're I feel like some of you are kind of defensive. Like you 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 don't step outside of your comfort zone because you feel like well, A, you don't know what to expect and that scares you. B, you feel like, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe for some reason you just feel like, you know, there's only certain people that you can trust and you're not willing to let other people in. Um, some of you guys don't trust in humanity in general. Um, which, you know, hum, humankind is complicated. We're, we're a weird species. There's this duality, duality to us. You know, we're, we're capable of so much evil, but also capable of so much good. And, you know, the sometimes, you know, we can surprise each other in that regard. We've got the Knight of Cups. So, um, you know, this is, this is what you want. This is the kind of person you're looking for. Somebody who's, you know, going to give you what you want. Who's going to, you know, treat you right and be very, you know, very invested and in interested in you as a person. Um, who's going to, some of you are looking for somebody to kind of take the lead, you know, because maybe you guys are used to being the ones doing all the work and putting all the effort into relationships. Um, <sighs> guys two of cups this is about union this is about love and partnerships this is like this is awesome so like these two cards are representing what is out there waiting just just waiting for you to you know be brave and go looking for it okay do you know what i'm saying this is what's waiting for you. Knight of Cups, Two of Cups. Love, happy, good times. Um, stability, commitment, all of that. You know, em emotional availability. <laughs> um, somebody who's going to meet your needs. And somebody that you can really, you know, live your life with. That's what's waiting for you. That's what's out there. You just have to go looking for it. And you, you can't be afraid... You can't be afraid of it um, because it's probably not going to come exactly in the form that you envision it. Um, and I feel like, you know, like I've already said, the thing that's really blocking you guys is this fear of stepping outside of your comfort zone and trying new things, you know, and, and taking a risk with new people. You know what I'm saying? Because you're afraid of being hurt, and that's understandable. But like anything worth doing, there's there's some inherent risk there, right? Um, so group number four, that's your reading. I hope this resonates with you, and I hope you find it helpful. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching group number four. I hope I see you guys next time, and I really don't have anything else to say, so, um, bye!